Have you ever wondered which weapon can pierce the armor of modern vehicles, leaving them helpless and still remain relevant nearly 70 years later? There's a machine gun that struck fear into enemies back in the 1950s and continues to be used in the most unexpected corners of the world. From the deserts of Africa to the hot zones of the Middle East, it's too powerful for ordinary infantry but too versatile to be replaced by more modern systems. And the scariest part? Its bullets can penetrate armor considered invulnerable, and its secrets still spark debates among experts. In this video, you'll learn about the machine gun that became a nightmare for tanks, patrol boats, and even low-flying aircraft, and understand why it still holds its ground today. The 1950s. On Soviet army training grounds, the usual hum of small arms is interrupted by new sounds of explosions and gunfire. Among familiar weapons, a strange, almost intimidating sound appears, the KPV, a heavy machine gun by Vladimir Vladimirov, firing a 14.5mm cartridge previously used only in anti-tank rifles. The power it demonstrates from the very first shot astonishes engineers and soldiers alike. The B-32 bullet, weighing nearly 65 grams, travels with such speed and energy that the frontal armor of BTRs and light tanks barely offers any protection. This machine gun is more than a weapon. It becomes the bridge between artillery and small arms, a remarkable hybrid of power and precision, capable of tackling tasks ordinary machine guns could never handle. In response, the 14.5 by 114 mm cartridge was developed. Its specifications were staggering. A bullet over 60 grams with a tungsten core accelerated to nearly 1,050 meters per second could penetrate up to 32 millimeters of armor at 500 meters. This was a weapon that could radically change the approach to combating armored vehicles. Under this ammunition, a team of engineers led by Semyon Vladimirov developed a machine gun that combined simple construction reliability, and the ability to withstand enormous stresses. The KPV's mechanics impress with rational design. Its action works on the short recoil principle, a time-tested system capable of handling record-breaking firing forces. Locking is achieved with a rotating bolt, and the combat lugs are threaded segments that firmly engage the receiver. Feeding is done via a 40 or 50 round metal belt, ensuring high practical firing rates. And a quick change barrel is essential when working with such high energy rounds. Every part is meticulously designed, creating a system that operates reliably even under extreme conditions. But such power comes at a price. The machine gun alone, without its mount, weighs 49 kilograms, making it too heavy for regular infantry and limiting its use on tripods. Yet this very weight makes it safe to fire a cartridge with nearly 32 kilojoules of muzzle energy. For comparison, the Soviet 12.7 by 108 millimeters heavy machine gun produces around 18 kilojoules. The KPV becomes a weapon of an intermediate class, too powerful for a regular machine gun, but still light enough to be mounted on armored vehicles and anti-aircraft systems. It balances between raw strength and battlefield mobility, opening an entirely new niche. The weapon's versatility becomes immediately clear. The same machine gun can be mounted on Karyakin's 105-kilogram wheeled mount or on Barasham's lighter 39-kilogram tripod, turning it into a small cannon for infantry. The tank version, KPVT, features an electric trigger and an improved feeding system, making it standard armament on heavy tanks starting from the T-10, as well as APCs including the BTR-60 and even the modern BTR-82A. At sea and in air defense roles, the KPV becomes just as indispensable. Its longevity comes not only from its raw power, but also from its adaptability. Even decades later, no one has created a weapon that combines penetration, reliability, and engineering simplicity the way the KPV does. On naval vessels, it quickly finds its place. 
Sailors needed a weapon capable of confidently hitting targets at short distances, operating in high humidity and tolerating sharp temperature changes. Pedestal mounts like the MTPU and turret systems of the 2M series provide exactly that. Simple maintenance paired with serious firepower. On patrol boats and small ships, these mounts become the main defense against light surface threats and low-flying aircraft. In the tight confines of a deck, both power and structural stability are critical, and the KPV delivers the perfect combination of strength and compactness crews rely on. But its potential shines even more in the role of anti-aircraft weaponry. During the years when aircraft relied heavily on low-altitude flight to evade radar, Armies needed a mobile, rapid-fire weapon capable of saturating airspace with dense fire. This led to the creation of ZPU systems, first single-barrel, then twin-barrel, and eventually four-barrel configurations. These mounts could create entire walls of tracers through which no pilot of a strike aircraft or helicopter could safely pass. Their versatility earned them global recognition. They were installed on trucks, fixed positions, armored vehicles, practically anywhere. At the time, this was one of the most effective ways to defend troops against targets too fast for artillery and too tough for small arms. The KPV's ability to operate equally well on land, sea, and in the air is no accident. It's a direct result of engineering logic. A barrel built to withstand enormous stresses allows for prolonged firing without catastrophic overheating. A simple action ensures reliable operation in deserts and in freezing climates. Belt feeding reduces the chance of malfunctions and enables bursts of varying length, from warning shots to complete suppression. Troops valued that the weapon required no complex maintenance. Even after heavy use, basic cleaning was enough to bring it back into service. But the main factor behind the KPV's longevity is its sheer penetration. The B-32 round, developed in the late 1940s, is rated under NATO standards at a protection level comparable to defenses used against 25mm high-explosive shells. This means that even modern armored vehicles, built with new materials and enhanced protection, often remain vulnerable to KPV fire at typical combat distances. For APCs, reconnaissance vehicles, escort transports, and even some models of hardened tactical trucks, the threat is still very real. Yet penetration is only one side of the story. The other reason that weapons survived for so long is the immense ecosystem built around it. APCs, BRDM vehicles, boats, anti-aircraft mounts, fixed positions. For decades, all of these platforms formed a system where the KPV was the central component. Replacing it overnight would require rebuilding the entire weapons infrastructure, ammunition manufacturing, vehicle modernization, logistics chains. No army could realistically make such a transition quickly. At the same time, the KPV became not only an official military asset, but also a weapon widely used in conflicts far beyond major state armies. Across Africa and the Middle East, it gained almost legendary status. Local groups mounted it on technical pickup trucks, turning civilian vehicles into improvised combat platforms. Its simple design allowed it to be maintained even without trained specialists, while its powerful round delivered effects no other small arm system could match. In these regions, the KPV became a symbol of raw, accessible firepower, effective even where resources and infrastructure were scarce. Despite its global spread, the machine gun never turned into a relic. On the contrary, its relevance grew as light-armored vehicles of new generations became widespread on the battlefield. Many nations prioritized mobility and speed, creating vehicles capable of crossing rough terrain but not always equipped with heavy protection. And this is exactly where the KPV proved again how well-designed it truly was. It occupied a niche that neither 12.7mm systems nor 30mm cannons could fully replace. The former were too weak, the latter too expensive and complex for mass deployment.
Gradually, the weapon earned a reputation for never aging. Every new generation of military hardware only highlighted how perfectly balanced its design was. Power, simplicity, versatility. Armies continued using it not because they lacked alternatives, but because the alternatives were either too complicated or too narrowly specialized. The KPV remained a tool you could trust with anything, covering a convoy, defending a position, arming a patrol boat. The machine gun kept proving that weapons can be created not only for the present, but for the future. The niche chosen for it in the late 1940s turned out to be so precise that modern technological progress couldn't replace it. As new armored vehicles appear on the battlefield, vehicles with better protection and modern active defense systems, the 14.5mm round still poses a threat. At medium combat distances, it penetrates armor many consider invulnerable to small arms fire. This is what keeps Vladimirov's machine gun relevant decades after its creation. The engineering logic of the KPV is also visible in components that look simple at first glance, but are brilliant in practice. The quick-change barrel enables long bursts without dangerous overheating. The automatic feeding system keeps the firing rate stable. The metal belt eliminates jams that might otherwise cost lives in combat. And the weapon requires no specialized maintenance. Basic cleaning and mechanical checks bring it back into action even after heavy use. This simplicity became one of the key reasons for its durability. Just as important is its universality. Mounted on light armored vehicles, the KPV turns them into mobile fire platforms capable of delivering accurate support fire. On heavy tanks, it becomes part of the anti-aircraft suite, effective against low-flying aircraft and light armor. In fixed positions and anti-aircraft complexes, it creates dense fire corridors that are nearly impossible to cross safely. On small naval craft, it protects the crew and engages surface threats. In every one of these roles, the weapon remains highly effective, demonstrating the flexibility and endurance of its design. The simplicity and reliability of the KPV also contributed to its long life. Unlike many modern systems, where complex electronics and specialized components demand constant maintenance and upgrades, Vladimirov's machine gun thrives in any conditions. It can operate in desert heat, northern cold, and high humidity maritime environments. This level of endurance and independence from infrastructure makes it a weapon that can serve for decades, even as other systems become obsolete. Beyond official army use, the KPV gained a special status in conflict zones worldwide. Mounted on technical pickup trucks, it created improvised combat platforms that delivered unmatched effectiveness under limited resources. Local forces used it as a suppression weapon that required minimal operator training while maintaining high battlefield performance. Its ease of use and ammunition availability made it a symbol of raw, practical power. The secret of the KPV's longevity lies not only in its combat capabilities, but also in its operational concept. It occupies a vital intermediate niche. Too powerful to be replaced by 12.7mm machine guns, yet too rational to be supplanted by heavier automatic cannons. Its firepower and technological simplicity allowed it to remain relevant for decades, combining tactical flexibility with strategic value. This balance made the KPV a benchmark for small arms, a weapon that doesn't need constant modernization to stay effective. The history of the KPV demonstrates how engineering thought from a specific era can outlast changes in technology and tactics. It proves that a well-chosen niche and balanced design can create a weapon capable of remaining effective for decades. As long as light-armored vehicles exist, low-flying threats need countering, and fire support is required, 
the KPV remains in demand. Its raw, effective power shows that 1940s engineering logic can transcend generations, and a weapon built for real combat needs does not lose significance over time. The KPV is more than a machine gun. It became a symbol of engineering, versatility, and practical efficiency. Its history shows that a weapon designed with a deep understanding of tactical needs can stay on the front lines far longer than expected. Even today, when modern armored vehicles and mobile systems clash on the battlefield, Vladimirov's machine gun continues to demonstrate power and reliability, making it a legend among small arms and a testament to enduring engineering wisdom.